Today we look at the eighth sermon in God's Big Story, the end of all things exile, and the text we examine first is from Psalm 137. Alongside Babylon's rivers we sat on the banks, we cried and cried, remembering the good old days in Zion. Alongside the quaking aspens we stacked our unplayed harps. That's where our captors demanded songs, sarcastic and mocking, sing us a happy Zion song. Oh, how could we ever sing God's song in this wasteland? If I ever forget you, Jerusalem, let my fingers wither and fall off like leaves. Let my tongue swell and turn black if I fail to remember you. If I fail, O oh dear Jerusalem, to honour you as my greatest. God, remember these Edomites and remember the ruin of Jerusalem. That day they yelled out, wreck it, smash it to bits. And you Babylonians, ravagers, a reward to whoever gets back at you for all you've done to us. Yes, a reward to the one who grabs your babies and smashes their heads on the rocks. Many of you will know the Boney M song by the rivers of Babylon. But did you know it was based on Psalm 137 that we've just heard? It refers to living in a repressive society and the longing for freedom, just like the Israelites did whilst they were held in captivity. But the Israelites aren't the only people in history that have been displaced from their homeland. There are many around the world in that situation. In 2018, every minute, 25 people were forced to flee from their homes. Worldwide, there are over 70 million people, all needing safety from issues such as war, conflict and persecution. 67% of them coming from just five countries, Syria, Afghanistan, South Sudan, Myanmar and Somalia. I wonder what it must be like to be uprooted from your home, taken to another country where you might not speak the language or have any cultural understanding, know nobody at all. If you could only take three treasured possessions grabbed in a hurry, I wonder what you might choose. And who would you blame for the situation you found yourself in? The propagators of the conflicts? Civil war? Ethnic cleansing? Unexpected natural disasters? Or something else? Well, over in Babylon, some of the captive Israelites blamed God, thinking that he'd let them down. Some blame their parents because they'd sinned so much and they thought that God was taking it out on them, the next generation, instead. And then there were some others with a different attitude who probably quite liked the new life. After all, they were living in a wealthy and diverse city and civilization, and they must have thought there were some exciting possibilities ahead for them. And finally, there were those who just thought that God had carried out the punishment he'd warned them about. They'd realised it was their own fault that they were in this mess and they were getting what they deserved if only they'd listened to what Amos had had to say to them. God had had enough. Israel had had plenty of warnings. The covenant with God included rules for living and made it pretty clear what the consequences would be if Israel failed to keep them. The prophets had repeated these warnings over and over again. People knew what would happen if they carried on disobeying God's rule, but deep down, they never really thought he'd actually follow through and do what he said. I guess that's a bit like a child at home. They know the consequences of bad behaviour, but they never really believe their mum or dads are going to actually do anything about it, and they push and push and push, and when they do, they're really shocked. Exactly the same. God had forgiven them countless times and restored his people, but now they'd ignored the warnings once too often. Judgment had fallen. Jerusalem had been invaded by the army of Babylon. The invaders defeated the Israelites, destroyed their temple, in order to make sure they couldn't rebel against their new rulers, took many of the Israelites captive into exile in Babylon, hundreds of miles to the east. The holy city Jerusalem was close to them, this was devastating. Had the God of Israel, who'd been resident in the Holy of Holies and the temple in Jerusalem, abandoned his people? The reactions of the Israelites varied. Some abandoned their faith in the God of Israel. Others recognised their responsibilities in this calamity. Why hadn't they listened before? For some, there was a renewed desire to return and reform, to follow God more faithfully. For all of them, exile was a real wake-up call.
For many Christians, this exile represents a second judgment, a second expulsion from Eden. Adam and Eve had failed to live a life of obedience before God. So the people of Israel became a second Adam. But they failed too. They were expelled from their Eden, the city of Jerusalem. And that brings us to the end of the Old Testament section of God's big story and into the New Testament, where we begin to see what God does next to bring his people back to him. Amen.